Hello and welcome. So in this video, we will see how to generate uh, pulse width modulation or PWM waveforms. Okay, so this EPWM module is a specialized hardware module in C2000 microcontroller, which enables to generate PWM waveforms with very high accuracy and flexibility. So this EPWM module has eight other sub-modules within it. So this is a high level architecture of the enhanced pulse width modulation module. The system clock coming from here can be pre-scaled. So that is divided by some fraction. So let's say we are getting 200 megahertz clock frequency. You can pre-scale it or divide it by some fraction. Then you can use that to make the PWM waveform. So this is the clock pre-scaler which will divide the clock frequency by some amount which you specify. So which goes to the 16-bit uh, counter. So this is the heart of the PW, EPWM module. Counter can work in up, down or up, down count mode. So that counter value is compared with the register values which we can specify it in A, B, C or D register. So this uh, counter value will be compared with the register value. So if it matches, then we can uh, set the pin to high or low. That is how we generate the PWM waveforms. And then there is a dead band module. So if you want to delay uh, one waveform with respect to other, so uh, for example in inverter application, the upper switch and lower switch should not be turned on at the same time, else it will short the DC bus. So what we will do is we will delay or we will create a dead band, uh, which means after that PWM uh, signal is turned on, after on only some uh, 5 microseconds or 3 microseconds, we will turn on another PWM signal. So that, that is what uh, deadband module is used. So the signal coming from here goes through all these modules and it will, it gets out in the EPWM XA and XB. So this XA, so each PWM module, e EPWM module has two channels A and B. So there are about 12 modules in this particular launch pad F238790 launch pad. So each uh, module has two channels. So one A and one B. So if you choose uh, module 1, there is 1A and 1B. If you choose 2, there is a 2A and a 2B. So usually we will, uh, for uh, for a 3 phase inverter, we will use uh, 3 modules, EPWM 1, 2 and 3. And for the inverter, the upper switch and lower switch will usually give the 1A uh, to the upper switch and 1B to the lower switch. So 2A for the upper switch and 2B for the lower switch of the phase Y, R, Y, B. So second phase we will use uh, the second modules out, pin out. And the trip zone is used uh, to, if you sense any fault, you can immediately trip the uh, PWM gate pulses. So we will open up MATLAB. So we will create a new model. So you have to save it. So I will, I will save it here as EPWM tutorial. Don't forget to save it. If you don't save it, the hardware implementation where we will convert the simulink into C code will not work. So go to the modeling tab, model settings. And there is a hardware implementation tab. Click on that and choose your particular processor. I'm go I'm using right now a TA Delfino F2387 90 launchpad. Click on it. Now there is a new tab appeared here that is called hardware. So click on the hardware settings. Go to target hardware resources. So you can see all the modules. You can configure the pinouts. So we are interested in the enhanced pulse width modulation or EPWM. Click on it. And you can see there are 12 uh, modules here as I said and each module has two channels 1A and 1B. So this 1A has been mapped to GPIO. GPIO stands for general purpose input output pin 0. 1A is, uh, is mapped hardware in, in hardware to GPIO 0 and 1B mapped to 1. So you can see the pin here. So you know the pin right now, but where it is specifically located in hardware. So I will show. So you can see there are a lot of pins here. So which you know is uh, EBWM, uh, sorry, GPIO 0 or 1. You can go to the uh, quick start guide. So type your launchpad name. In browser, uh, go and type your launchpad F2837. 
So click on this link from Texas Instrument. If you scroll down to the technical documentation section, there is a Launchpad Quick Start Guide. Click on it. You can see the PWM 1A, which is here. So this is an expanded version of this. So you have to physically locate. Uh, this is your port where you will plug in your uh, connection to the USB uh, to the computer. So from this port to the right side, uh, the top pin is the EPWM 1A. So this is how you find the which pin is located where. So uh, now click on the simulation. Click on the library browser. So you have to already uh, have installed the uh, embedded coder support. Uh, for C2000 microcontroller, I think it is in here. Yeah, I in the below the C2000 microcontroller block set, there is a F2837XD. So this is my processor. So you can see the uh, specialized hardware blocks. I am interested in the EPW module. Drag and drop it in the Simulink uh, GUI. So if you double click on it, you can see various things you can configure. So the main two things you have to configure is the timer period here and the counter compare here. So this timer period defines the PWM frequency. So if you go into this link, I will uh, put it down below. So go to the EPWM docs and uh, go to the time base module. So this is a screenshot from uh, Texas Instruments video. So for up down count mode, you, you need to use this formula. So this uh, TPWM or uh, time period of your PWM frequency is determined by us. So let's say if you want to generate at 15 kilohertz, 1 by 15 kilohertz is your time period of your PWM signal. So I want to today generate at 15 kilohertz. So I will choose 1 by 50 and you need to enter this TBPRD here. So this timer period corresponds to this. So you have to enter this here to calculate that you know this and you have to find out this uh, time based clock. So this time based clock is dependent on our EPWM clock and high speed clock divide and clock divide. So we will set it as 1 and 1 for usually we will set it as 1 and 1 time based clock prescaler is 1 and high speed clock which if which uh, if these two are one and one then our time based clock is directly equal to the epwm clock so this epwm clock is derived from the system clock so i will show go to the hardware go to the hardware settings so how you find the clock frequency is like this the epwm clock so go to the target hardware resource and epwm you can see the epwm clock divider is a system clock which is a 200 megahertz for this launch pad you can click on it and i will choose system clock by one so which means our my epwm clock is exactly equal to the system clock so it, if it is 200 megahertz then time based clock is also 200 megahertz so one by 200 megahertz you know this value so if you know these two value you can compute this so for 15 kilohertz it comes around 6667 so make sure your counting mode is in up and down count mode to generate a symmetrical waveforms and the formula uh, which i used to calculate this is based on the up down count mode now counter compare so this this counter compare values initially uh, so you have to click on the specify via dialog so dialog is this this box is called the dialog box you can click on it and choose it as input port which means so you can specify the counter compare value of the a register from this input port i will i will make a constant here so then i will multiply this number with a gain so that gain is 6667 so i will use this gain and multiply it with one so which means the counter compare value is of the module a is 6666 so this is the initial value which i will set it as 666 
7. We don't use uh, counter number B value for the moment. So, 6066. Okay. Now, so this uh, counter number value is 1 times this value, which means it is 6666. So, if you make it as 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 into this is uh, some 3000 something. So, the duty cycle, we are essentially controlling the duty cycle. Okay, I will just draw a waveform and Maybe it will be visually clear. Okay. So, for the up down counter mode, this is the waveform it will look like. And if you specify the uh, counter compare value, so this is the maximum value. So, if you specify the value, the counter compare value to be half of it, which, uh, which I have set right now. So, this is the up down counter mode waveform. So, let us say I am specifying the uh, counter compare A value to be 3000 something. When this uh, counter value reaches this 3000 value, it will generate one pulse. And after that, if it goes below that value, it will generate another pulse. So, that is how we get the PWM waveforms. So, essentially, we are we are controlling the duty cycle by based by, by changing the counter compare value. Okay, so right now I have set it as uh, 0.5, which means 50% on time and 50% off time. Uh, connect your uh, C2000 through the cable through uh, to your computer. The, the light should be uh, illuminating here. So, I have connected. Okay, go to this hardware and click on build and deploy. So, not build. Build means it will just uh, compile the code into the uh, assembly code for this processor, but we want to build and deploy. Deploy means take this all the code and uh, send it to the C2000 microcontroller through the USB, then start the uh, the program. So, start running the program. So, click on this build and deploy. Click on the view diagnostics. You can see what uh, this is doing in the background. So, it is generating the C code. Okay, so I have opened uh, this simulation in 2022B on which I have installed the C2000 hardware. So, one thing you need to do is go to the model settings again. You have to choose the Simulink or Embedded Coder hardware package, not SOC. SOC stands for System on Chip. So, we are not using this, we are using this press ok ok so we will make sure uh, the the epwm clock frequency is same as we configured in the 2023b go to the epwm ah, so we have to configure it again so uh, system clock by 2 to system clock by 1 so what i did is uh, i opened the uh, simulation in 2023b and started creating all the model but I have installed the C2000 support package in 2022B. So, it, so now we have the simulation in MATLAB 2022B. We have configured it. Press on build and deploy. So, what we expect is to, to get a PWM waveform with 15 kilohertz frequency and duty cycle of 50%. On time 50%, off time 50%. So, we have already seen at which pin you can you can get the waveforms. So, make sure to connect jumpers uh, to your oscilloscope probe. Do not directly probe it. Uh, you, may, you may accidentally short the two pins. Okay. So, I have connected the positive and negative probe uh, to the ground and the GPIO pin 0. I will uh, turn on my oscilloscope. So, you can see there is a 50 uh, kilohertz waveform. So, you can see there is a 15 kilohertz waveform with uh, duty cycle. So, again, so, there is a negative duty of 50 percent and a positive duty is also. So, here it is positive duty also 50 percent. So, we have successfully generated the PWA waveforms. So, let us say uh, if I want to change the change the duty cycle, I will just uh, click on this 0.5 and make it 0.1. So, uh, now I, I am generating on time is uh, 
ten percent duty cycle and the off time is ninety percent. So I will press this and click on build and deploy. Wait for this to complete and then I will show the waveform speed of the waveform. Okay, now I have changed the uh, duty cycle to point one. So that is point one into six thousand sixty six uh, is some six hundred or something like that. So this point one means now I will get ten. 10% uh, on time and 90% off time. So that is what I expect in my waveform. Now I will click on build and deploy and after it has been completed, you can see here there is the plus duty, uh, the uh, minus duty is 90%, the plus duty is 10% as we ex expected. So that is how we generate uh, simple PWM waveforms uh, with this EPWM module. Thank you.